Hello guys, in this video I'd love to help you find the answer to the question Is the enable web security annotation really needed in the Supreme Framework? Have you noticed when you forget to use this annotation in the Supreme project the security of the Supreme application still works as expected? So what is the truth? Is this annotation really needed or not? You know, the enable web security annotation can be used to enable web security for Java web application that uses the Supreme Framework and Supreme Security. It tells Supreme Security to implement some basic configurations for web security, HTTP security, exploit protection, etc. Let me show you how this uh, annotation works behind the scene. So you can see in this Java Supreme project, I have a security configuration class and it is marked with the enable web security annotation. And let me dive deeper into the code of this annotation and you can see it imports several configuration classes such as web security configuration and you can see it configures a filter, a Supreme security filter let me show you yeah Supreme security filter chain here yeah. authorize HTTP request and request authentication by default here yeah and configure from login HTT basic with default and the second confusion class that is imported by this uh, enable web security annotation is Supreme Web MVC import selector it conditionally imports the web MVC security configuration if the dispatcher servlet um, present in the class path and in this web MVC security configuration class, it configures uh, argument resolvers. And the mapping composite filter chain proxy and so on. And the next class is OR2 import selector that conditionally imports auto clan configuration if uh, auto clan library is present in the class path and the next class is imported by this uh, enable web security annotation is HTTP security configuration here and you can see in this class it uh, exposes uh, HTTP security object as a bit and it configures uh, some default default configurations for CSRF exception handling header session management and so on and it also uh, it okay okay so lot of code right so imagine that uh, you if you have to write this type of code manually so using the web uh, security annotation is very convenient it saves a lot of time and you can see it uh, if she is the enable global authentication class and in this uh, class it imports authentication configuration that exposes uh, bin of type authentication manager builder and authentication uh, manager so you can see behind the scenes the enable web security animation uh, does a lot of work and you know this annotation is needed in non Supreme boot applications which do not have auto configuration features a non Supreme boot application uses blend Supreme framework without starter dependencies provided by Supreme boot if you don't use this annotation in non-Supreme Boot projects, you will have to manually 
write code for basic security configurations as I have shown you uh, the code behind the scenes of the enable web security analysis it does a lot of work so if you don't use don't use this analysis you will have to manually write a lot of code for security confusions which is time consuming and error prone so know that this uh, enable web security analysis is needed is mandatory in non Spring Boot projects and this annotation is optional, not mandatory in uh, Spring Boot applications which use auto configuration features. You know, when Spring Security is present in the class path, the Security Auto Configuration class will end up using the Enable Web Security Annotation. That's the reason why, when you forget to use this annotation, the security of the application still works as expected. Let me uh, show you the auto configuration feature of Spring Security okay so let me update the code in the main class exclude uh, security auto configuration just to be able to see the code of this uh, security auto configuration class and you can see this uh, class imports the Spring Web Security Configuration class here and you can see if you look at the code of this class you see it uses the web enable web security annotation for the static class web security enable configuration that means the security auto configuration class or Spring uh, security auto configuration feature will use the enable web security edition uh, behind the scene that means using the web enable web security edition for uh, for confusion class here is optional unless we need to uh, enable debugging for spring security uh, so we use this edition to uh, uh, specify the debug attribute is True, otherwise, uh, using this enable web security annotation, annotation is optional, it is not mandatory. Make sense? So, I think you forgot the answer to the question is the enable web security annotation really needed in a Spring application in a Spring project? I hope you found this video helpful. Please subscribe to my channel, like, comment and share this video. Thanks for watching.